Now, as we celebrate the career of Peter Brock at this very special event this year, we should point out that there is one man who played a massive role in Brock's life, and he was the man who actually discovered him or brought him to the grand stage that we see here today. Harry Firth won the first Bathurst 1000 with Bob Jane, one of a number of victories that Harry enjoyed, but he was also a marvellous talent scout. Before he took charge of Ford's factory campaigns at Bathurst, Firth teamed with Alan Moffat in United States endurance races, their Cortina upstaging Ford's American and European best. They were rude. We beat them. Yeah. We slaughtered them. And they didn't want to know it. Moffat was only starting to forge his reputation then, and Firth claims he taught the Canadian a lot. Well, I've thought about it, Al, and I'm going. Oh, but, you know, you can't. I said, well, I am, I'm going. Said, oh, what are you going to do? I said, read about it in the papers in two or three days. <laughs> I've already signed a contract with General Motors, you see. Firth had taken the Cortina on a hugely successful development path as a showroom winner and a Bathurst winner and was insulted when Ford brought American Al Turner in to oversee their factory racing operation. So Firth accepted an offer to run the Holden dealer team, the Monaros, at the same time developing the new Tirana for rallying. He had no input into the design of the Monaro, but he did improve it as a race car, developing a more powerful engine than the Chevy plant they originally installed. And he hand-picked his drivers for the 1969 Bathurst 1000. I'm going to have him and him and him and him. And amongst that was Brock and Bond. Who did Brock? Who's he? I said, don't worry about him, he'll be right. Uh, so I took Brock under my wing and uh, taught him a few things. <laughs> he was pretty wild in the early days. Oh, oh God, yes. A hamburger with a lot was a meal. Uh, a clean jeans and T-shirt was well dressed. <laughs> Bond, the more seasoned driver, won the race. Brock could not compete against Bond in a rally. No way. Bond was streets and ahead above him in a rally. He's just so good. But Brock's adaptability made it easier for Harry to coach him, especially when it came to developing the new Tiranas as circuit racing weapons. I made a prototype, a six-cylinder Tirana into the prototype XU1, and uh, he drove that. And Bond was a bit different because he'd had rally experience. Oh, Bond, he hadn't had that much, but he was good in rallies, obviously. And, uh, but he had a natural style which I couldn't change. Harry found, after observing overseas trends, that lowering and stiffening suspension made the Tiranas much faster, but it involved changing driving technique to turn the car in and point it out, rather than drift around the corner rally style. He had Brock perform all the testing. We knocked five to 10% off lap times not on, at each circuit. That's a lot, you know. So Brock suddenly evolved a whole new way of touring it with the machinery to do it with. That's why he walked away from everyone else and won touring our champions and everything. How did you get Brock to, to change? He was obviously willing to listen. Ah, oh, he was no fool. He knew, he knew that if you look at the stopwatch, you're going faster, you know, and he's not getting that information from any or help from anyone else. That's what he understands. Firth continued to develop Brock and the Tirana, culminating in a dramatic wet track victory in 1972. By then, the old fox was coming to the end of his massive contribution to Australian motorsport, but Brock's story was only just beginning.